most evangelical Christians are accustomed to reading the Bible as a message from God for me, for me personally, which might call me to repent, to trust him, to, to live in growing obedience. And of course, I have no problem with that. I, I, I think that the Bible is God's message to uh, people. And yet you're describing the Bible as a source for political and social thinking. So how would you respond to the critique? Someone might say, well, Jesus isn't political. The Bible isn't political. It's about saving souls. Oz, you've just gone too far. Mm -hmm. Well, think of the whole biblical story. The first 11 chapters, the prehistory of humanity, you see the problems. On one extreme, authoritarianism. On the other, anarchy before the flood and so on. Then God calls one man, Abraham, and then a family. But in Exodus, the founding of the people of God as a nation and then when Israel fails through our Lord, a worldwide people of God. But it's never just me. Mm. It's us. Yes, there's an incredible care for the individual because each person made in the image of God is unique. We're unsubstitutable. There's no one like you. So, of course, it's individual and personal, but it's we, the church the people of God, Israel, and not only Moses, and so on. So we've got to capture the I and the we together mm. and not just be selfish. So you can see Western individualism is as much an extreme as Chinese collectivism. Yes, absolutely. The Bible is I and we. It's not collectivist, but nor is it individualist. It's both. Now, there's an important point about what you're saying, Patrick. Many Christians think only the New Testament. Mm. Now, the trouble with that politically is, of course, that the early church had zero power. So they weren't the slightest bit responsible for the institutions of Rome. They couldn't be. And for evils in Rome, like slavery, they couldn't be. Mm -hmm. So you can see in a letter like Paul writing about Philemon, that the seeds of freedom are there when Onesimus is asked to call Philemon a brother and so on. And just but to be clear for our audience, uh, the story of Philemon, Philemon is a slave owner and Onesimus is his runaway slave who runs to Paul. Paul sends him back with a letter to Philemon and that's what you're referring to. No, exactly. But in other words, people who only look at the New Testament, look at the time when the church had zero responsibility politically, mm. socially. But we're the heirs of the Old Testament, too. And remember, America is based on Exodus. And a key part of Exodus is the reciprocal responsibility of everyone for everyone. Love your neighbors yourself. Yes. Now, in Jewish terms, that means every Jew responsible for every Jew. In American terms, that should mean every American responsible for every American. In other words, there's a collective responsibility. So Christians who say it's all about me and saving souls, they've got it entirely wrong, and they've overextended the political situation of the New Testament. And we've got to recover some of the great... For example, in the Old Testament, you have a high view of human dignity. It doesn't come from the New. You have a high view of truth. You have a high view of words and the challenge of evil speech. It doesn't come from the new. The new merely fulfills what the old started. So we've got to look at the whole Bible. And that dreadful idea a couple of years ago with a megachurch pastor saying we've got to unhitch our faith from the Old Testament, that was <laughs> utterly appalling. I, I tend to agree with you on that account. You know, I, I had a seminary professor who called this salvation selfishness. And what he meant by that was, uh, for a lot of evangelicals, we think that salvation is merely an individual matter. And we ignore the fact that both in the Old and the New Testament, God intends to save, restore all of creation, that he has concerns for all people and all places. And, you know, as I reflect on what you're describing, you're saying, yes, let, let, let's talk about the salvation of individuals, but let's not leave behind the fact that God has wisdom for how we live life together. 